Hopefully we are now recording. Um, welcome to Research Applications Using Drupal and Backdrop. Um, I'm Tori Sparkman Lewis. I'm Director of Projects at Fibonacci Web Studio. Um, and this is Fibonacci's fearless leader, Irina Zaks. Um, and we'll be presenting together today. So better tools, better research. Um, Fibonacci is a group of experts that develops web tools for research in academia. We work with a wide variety of passionate people who do fascinating and fulfilling work. Um, researchers, academics, doctors, law professors, lawyers, judges, administrators, and advocates. Um, our goal is to help them do and share that work more efficient, efficiently, thoughtfully, and beautifully. So in our session today, we'll demonstrate how Backdrop and Drupal can both be used for research applications. We'll discuss successes and pain points for researchers and software developers. Sometimes those successes are the same, and sometimes those successes are different, and sometimes those pain points are the same, and sometimes those pain points are different. Um, we will compare our experiences on Backdrop versus Drupal, and we will talk about community projects. So what we know is researchers work together and that's how research gets done. But we know that the same is true for software developers too. I'm probably preaching to the choir because we're all here at Bad Camp today, but um, we're gonna talk about ways that we can contribute as a community to help research get done. So in a perfect world, um, research works like this. Data is collected from multiple sources, it's integrated and analyzed, and it leads to some new results, new applications, and soon thereafter, world fame and maybe a Nobel Prize. Um, our part in this is the integrated for multiple sources and analyze. We don't collect the data ourselves. Um, the rest is the part of the scientists. Um, so today we've selected four of our projects to showcase how this development and support has changed since 2014 and what our challenges are in supporting the existing apps that we have as well as building new apps. So this is a project from 2014, the Securities Litigation Analytics site. It's in Drupal 7. Um, this site started as a simple faculty research project, which examined a few variables in class action litigation. Since then, it's grown exponentially with over 2,000 data points collected for each case. So what are our challenges today? You notice I said Drupal 7 up there on that slide? That's one of our main challenges, is the approaching Drupal 7 end of life. Um, one of the, our other challenges is that exponential growth of data that I talked about and how do we manage that exponential growth of data. Our next project is from 2020. This started in Drupal 7 and now migrated to Drupal 8. Um, Smoke Free Media is a research and advocacy group at UCSF. Um, it aims to reduce the young audience's exposure to smoking in movies and media. Um, in 2020, we began to work with them on a project to accomplish two major goals. One is they used to be called smoke-free movies, but now a lot of things are on streaming services. So they've changed to smoke-free media. That does involve different data structure. Movies and media are not quite exactly the same. Um, and then we also needed to upgrade their very extensive database. Again, we were on Drupal 7. Um, and we wanted them to be able to do more robust research on their data sets. Our challenge on this project is, just like the universe, researcher websites um, tend towards entropy. So managing a site is always you know, a challenge. Our next project is from 2018. It's called Will Map. Um, and this is Drupal 8 support and maintenance. So this project documents laws around the world that govern internet intermediaries and shape users' digital rights. Um, it provides both basic and advanced tools to search for and visualize how legislation, decisions, and public policy are evolving globally. So as you can see here, it really is a visual map that allows you to see the whole globe and how these things change from place to place. So we inherited this very custom site and there's lots of custom coding um, and we need to do support and maintenance on it. Our main challenge at this point is that this is on Drupal 8 um, and the Drupal 9 upgrade process 
is proving prohibitively expensive because of all that custom work. So where do we go next? This site is from 2020. This is the Rock Center Law Insights site. Um, this is Drupal 8 and Drupal 9 on development and support. This website aggregates memoranda, blog posts, videos, podcasts, and other types of substantive legal analysis prepared by leading US and international law firms. This content is fully text searchable and it's presented in a format designed to help users quickly identify the information that they want. Our challenge right now on this side is upgrading to DTAM. This site is our new baby. Um, it's a 2022 site um, and we are doing this one in backdrop. Um, the Mapping Militants Project identifies patterns in the evolution of militant organizations um, in specified conflict theaters and provides representations of changing relationships among groups. So relationships are traced in these interactive timeline diagrams that we call maps. Um, and you can see how rivalries and alliances change over time through these militant groups. Attacks are also graphed on the map as well. These maps are then linked to the group profiles, which have in-depth um, news and data on all of these militant organizations, which provides a fully cited comprehensive report on each group. So this project had a pretty limited budget and it was previously hosted in two separate sites. So those comprehensive group profiles were on one site and then the maps were on a different site. Um, so we wanted to make sure that those were integrated in the new platform. So we just presented five different projects from various disciplines. Um, why am I talking about them all in one presentation? What do they have in common? Um, so what we know and what you know, certainly our researchers will tell us is that all research is unique. One of the reasons that I love working on research projects is I learn something new every time I'm working on one of these websites. I know more about militant organizations than I've ever thought that I would in my professional career. Um, so it's great to work with researchers who have a new angle on an old issue or researchers that are starting an entirely new conversation. But what we know is that research, while it is unique, has a lot in common. So we've learned some things from these projects, which research projects often, um, when we're talking about this kind of data research, begin with a prototype built in a spreadsheet or HTML site. And our job is to move those flat spreadsheets into a database that can handle those relationships and allow that more robust research within the database. Textual, numeric, and visualization need to have one database as that source of truth, or else we will find that things become inconsistent. If they're being housed in CSV files on people's computers, we often end up getting inconsistent data. So, one thing that research all has in common is that at the heart of it is researchers. Um, so, what do researchers want? First of all, they want to do their research. They probably don't know what Drupal is, or if they do, they don't really care about it. They don't want to spend more time on their website than they have to. They want to spend their time doing that research. Um, they also want to represent their work in a clear information architecture with a modern look and feel. So if their website looks like it was built in the 90s, they're not feeling really good about sharing that with other researchers. But what we found is that most researchers that we work with don't want that like super flashy look and feel, but they want something that looks modern and clean and nice. They want to know that they can trust the data. So not only do we have to sort of root out those inaccuracies and inconsistencies from those multiple sources that they might have been working with, but they need to know that we're not going to add any inconsistencies when we do the migration process into a database. And we also know that research changes. So the landscape will change as their research changes. We joke about mapping militants all the time. Our goal is that all of those groups will be disbanded and that that website will no longer matter. Um, but we know that that's probably not going to happen anytime soon, so things will keep evolving. So when I talked about the Smoke Free Media project, um, when we added streaming to the mix, we had to come up with an entirely new data set for episodes because when we were looking at movies, movies don't have episodes, right? So we had to invent an entirely new data structure to make sure that that information was being captured. 
So content is king. The most important part of any website is content, but this is even more true with research applications. If the content is not clean and well-structured, we can't do anything with it. We can't visualize it, we can't work with it. Um, we are not subject matter experts. I did not go to school to get my PhD in you know, very specific research fields, um, but we do um, develop research applications, and so we become an expert in how the data works. What we know is that the data is probably going to involve text and numbers, and that these need to be structured. We know that there needs to be relationships between the different data points, and we know that content managers are going to need to update that data. We also know that they'll probably want some sort of data visualization. All research is unique, but at the end of the day, we're working with data, and our job is to build a good data structure. So each property of your data needs to live where it belongs. Um, we're going to look at a sample research diagram, but one of the most important things in early client meetings is to figure out philosophically what the data relates to, um, how it relates to each other, and what relationships are going to be most important for visualizing the content. So looking at our sample research structure diagram, I've chosen movies because I think we've all seen a movie probably, so it might be a helpful um, sort of baseline. So when we think about a movie, the movie itself has a rating. It might be rated R, rated PG-13. It also has a description. What's the plot of this movie? We then have actors. So, you know, Brad Pitt is an actor. He's, I have no idea how old he is. I probably should have looked that up if I was going <laughs> to use this example. But Brad Pitt is in several different movies. So we wouldn't want to create more information about Brad Pitt every time we create a new Brad Pitt movie. We then have companies that create these movies. So like Disney's a company. It has a logo. It's a production company. Those are all information about that company. And again, we don't want to upload the logo every time we create a new Disney movie. So if you have spent some time in Drupal or Backdrop or both, you can already sort of see these start becoming content types, right? But then the important thing is that we need these content types to be able to talk to each other. So obviously movies and actors are related, but depending on the type of research we're doing, we might choose to add the actor to the movie or choose to add the movie to the actor. So if we're doing research on actors specifically, that's probably our primary content type and so we're pulling the movies in from there. Versus if we are doing research on movies, we are gonna do it sort of in the opposite direction. If we don't get this part right, the project becomes very inconsistent, that data becomes very inconsistent, and it becomes not usable in the research. And what we know is that it's very expensive to clean up inconsistent data. So we wanna make sure that we get this right in those first couple meetings with the client. So I'm not going to get into the technical parts. Irina is going to get much more technical than me in the second half of this. But I will say that Drupal and Backdrop do provide tools that make this really, really easy once we get the philosophical part right. Um, so entity reference and field and entity browser are two things that you'll want to look at for this. So once we have good data in our CMS, what do we do with it? So the first thing that we might want to do is use built-in tools in the CMS to generate a search on the fly. And I'm going to try to pull up a website here and hopefully I will figure this out. Beautiful. So again, that smoke-free media website. You can see here that I have a lot of searches that are built into the data set. And then down below I have all of the movies. So for instance, I might want to see what movies are G-rated that also have smoking in them. Because these are our worst offenders, right? It's a G-rated movie that has smoking in it. And then I can just scroll down and search. <coughs> and I can generate that information really, really easily and get all of my results down here to figure out who I need to yell at about these movies. And let's see if I can get back easily. The next thing I might want to do is export the data. So a lot of researchers like working in CSV files. 
we're never going to convince them that that's not the most efficient way to do it. So we provide easy exports so that they can get the data and manipulate it on their own. That being said, the website is always going to be the source of truth. So once you've downloaded that CSV file, it's yours to play with, but the updates are going to happen within the site. And then folks also might export the data and use other tools like Stata for more intensive specific analyses. All right. So all of that sounded really great, but um, as we all know, there are pain points with any project. Researchers, unfortunately, are usually not like self-made billionaires, right? Like they're doing this to make the world a better place and often they're working with limited funding streams. So one of the biggest issues is budget. A lot of people want to budget for the build. This is especially true in research where folks are getting grants for specific projects. However, what we know is that the universe tends toward entropy and things are going to continue to get chaotic. So we need to make sure that there's a budget for maintaining and updating the site moving forward. All of these people that got grants and built amazing sites in Drupal 7 are now running into that end of life problem where they don't necessarily have the funding to make that full upgrade. So that gives us to migrating from Drupal 7. Where do we go and why? A lot of folks who are in Drupal 7, especially researchers, they like their websites. They don't want to do a big upgrade to Drupal 10 and change a lot of stuff. They want it to work and they want it to be secure. So how do we make sure that that happens? I've harped on this a lot, but it's because it is truly critical and that's data accuracy. Again, these sites don't work if the data is not right. So how do we make sure that we're not introducing the inaccuracy? And how do we make sure that we're getting the accurate data from the client? The last thing is, if I had $10 for every time a researcher asked me to import data via CSV, I would be a very rich woman. Everyone wants to do this. Um, obviously, you can do this. But having a very serious conversation about what that means and why um, is really critical. So. First of all, do they want to import all their data right now, or do they want an ongoing import? Those look different, and making sure that we're maintaining data accuracy if they're updating via CSV is really important. Also, like, do they not like the website? If they want to import via CSV, does it mean we're not providing the right editing tools within the system? Um, and also, CSV files can often introduce inaccuracies if you have multiple people updating those. So my favorite example of this is when there's a cost column where there's money involved. Are they putting commas into that column? Is one research assistant using commas and one research assistant not using commas? Is someone using a dollar symbol somewhere and someone else not? So that's really, really important here um, and something you want to have ongoing conversations about whether or not you decide to import the data from the CSV. And those are our pain points. And now, you know, we'll talk about sort of the future of this. Where are we going from here? So first things first, does anyone have any questions about <laughs> the information that we presented? OK. It is really nice to talk in the very small uh, audience where we can connect more or less individually. Um, so I'm going to talk about how development of these applications also impacts development of systems that we are supporting, like Drupal and Backdrop. I will have to wear my glasses, otherwise I can't see things. So we presented four out of maybe 10 research projects that we are supporting, because they represent different challenges. Uh, First typical example would be a Drupal 7 project uh, that is right now in the system that is supposed to be end of life sometime. We don't know whether it will be this year or next year, but it has to be end of life. We don't want to develop new features in the system as much as we can, and we need to decide where we will move from here. Uh, we also need to manage exponential growth of data, and that um, 
this is pretty much like most more or less discovery for the project is eight years old. Our findings are that if we want to move this project to Drupal 9, it will be the cost of moving it to Drupal 9 are very close comparable to moving to any other system. We can use Node.js, we can use anything. And then this is a very big question for us, where will we, we will be contributing? Because as my notes say, and that is very important, when we are selecting the new uh, framework for our projects, we are choosing, no, sorry, we are choosing where we will be contributing next. And on most projects we uh, worked on, we contributed either by testing or by bug fixing or uh, providing new modules. So the decisions that we are making today and have made in the past or will be making for our next project impact Drupal or that Drupal by either keeping, uh, either we keep contributing to those projects or we move somewhere else and leave the community. So decoupled it was one of the very early things uh, with Drupal altogether. At Drupal 7, this site is already built, is partially decoupled. So now we're moving the entire front end, we will be moving to completely decoupled. We're in the process of reviewing which exactly, uh, what are we gonna be using, React or something else, or subset of React or, you know, not subset, but the other way around. But then the next iteration will be, do we move it to Drupal 9, do we no, move it to Node.js, or, and that is our, at this point, preferred solution, we would like to be able to use Backdrop. What are our challenges there? Uh, we need to have a reasonably sustainable, which means not super expensive migration path from Drupal 7 to Backdrop. And we feel that contributing in this space will help us in many ways, not on this pro just on this project, but on many others. Uh, we already did this uh, upgrade from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 for smoke-free media. And one thing that we learned that it's not just migration that makes it very expensive, but also cost of Drupal 9 maintenance uh, make uh, building research application as Drupal 9 require pretty good budget. Uh, when we up, when we moved from Drupal 9 to uh, Drupal 8 to Drupal 9, we had to do significant code updates just because of the change within the system. We're not even talking seven to nine. So this is something to keep in mind when you're working uh, going towards Drupal with Composer. Uh, this beautiful site, I don't think we showed it. It, it has uh, great you know, visualizations, everything is moving. Uh, it is stuck in Drupal 9 because cost of update was prohibitive. They simply didn't have budget. And so content is being uh, added, research is happening, but we are not developing anything new and we're waiting for next academic year to figure out what is sustainable solution. So the word sustainable, you know, every, every other slide is like, do we have enough money, is the reality. Um, even people who are not limited by budgets choose where they want to spend money. Um, we did manage to do reasonably easy update from Drupal, 9, from Drupal 8 to 9 on Rock Sensor Law Insights, but it's also reasonably simple site in terms it doesn't have a lot of custom features and most of the features are in Elasticsearch, which is not tied neither to Drupal 7, Backdrop, or Drupal 9. It's like its own animal. Uh, so we'll see when Drupal 10 is out, we'll see what's going to be our next step here. And this is our featured project that we would like to present. We're very happy and very proud of this project. Um, we had an opportunity, we were invited to work on this project last year and 
We looked around. Uh, Drupal, by that time, we already knew very well that Drupal 9 is expensive. The group didn't have a lot of money. Uh, the, they had some budget, but it was reasonably limited. And so we started uh, working with Backdrop, and we're very happy with this choice. We're going to be we're finalizing uh, the site right now, <coughs> and here are the reasons why this project is working great with on Backdrop CMS. Uh, backdrop, like all, like all Drupal family CMSs, is a great framework for building systems, system architecture with complex relationships. When you have some, when you do not have complex relationships, there are lots of other competing CMSs that might be cheaper or easier to maintain, but uh, complex relationships are the cornerstone. It's like. Such the backdrop Drupal is, I think, the best tool that I worked with to build systems with complex relationships. Uh, it has all familiar Drupal 7 features. We have predictable and affordable costs of upgrades. And um, to make it even easier, it's hosted on Pantheon, and we're very grateful for never-ending support for our wonderful uh, host of hosting company. While working on this project, we were able to contribute to make significant contributions. We created new layout with collapsible bars, which I think should, honestly, I think it should go in core because the issues with the sidebar um, uh, hit us uh, pretty badly and we're like, you can't see the, the sidebar that is not there but it's there blocking you, so we have to have new layout. We completed extremely important uh, module, so you can import data into paragraphs directly. Uh, it has completely revisited architecture because the ver version that is available on Drupal 9 does not work in, if anything is less, if anything is more complicated that very, a simple one-to-one -one mapping. And also we developed a uh, theme for Stanford based on decanter, Stanford decanter front end. And so that opens the door for any project at Stanford to have approved branded theme uh, based on backdrop. So here are our conclusions. <coughs> Research projects don't have to be expensive to be good research tools. Um, and our main um, goal for our company is to support research and education, so we take pride in building reusable tools that can be used by uh, other applications as well. And then we are open source uh, people, open source is more than the code, and we hope to continue living this life, uh, contributing to building a better society, and maybe contributing to applications that eventually will win a Nobel Prize. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Sure. If we keep recording, one more should stop. If not. I'm going to turn the lights on while okay. that we're just chatting. Sure. <laughs> just press the button. Sure.